Forecasting approaches. There are two main forecasting approaches. One is called the quantitative approach, which is a popular one. This approach deals with what is called as hard data or hard information. Hard information or data is what you know as data. So it's just numbers and other types of data. This method, this approach deals with generally involved with techniques, mathematical techniques, statistical techniques, also softwares that works with data and it's either going to be used as, especially on time series, as a projection of historical data in which time is a factor, or it involves um, the associative techniques, which um, uses causal relationship between different variables to make the forecast. We're gonna talk about this quantitative forecasting approach mainly in this course. The next approach is called the qualitative forecasting approach or the judgmental approach. This approach is not as popular and we're not gonna cover it in this class, though it is very useful and it's often businesses and companies and um, um, sometimes other non-governmental, they have to use this approach. So sometimes it is unavoidable, but it does not work with data or information that we know. It involves human judgment. Uh, an example of this is called Delphi method. So this approach permits the inclusion of what is called as soft information. Soft information is uh, human judgment, for example, personal opinions. Uh, this technique is useful when we don't have um, what is called as hard data. We don't have hard data and also it involves the type of variable that they are not quantifiable. So we can't really gather even data for these uh, types of problems. So that's why we have to um, use personal opinion and human judgment. Quantitative forecasting approach is the type of approach that we're gonna cover in this class. So let's just start with the first type of methods in this uh, approach, and that's the de deals with time series forecasting. So time series is a time ordered sequence of observation that has been taken in a regular time intervals. For example, suppose that you own um, a business that sells a product. So if you gather all your sales for every week, then you have the sales per week. So that's a time series. You have you have the data and you have the time. Okay. So if um, if time is actually a factor and you plot it, you can see a pattern, for example, that your sale has increased or decreased. So basically, time series involve some data that has time in it. So time is a factor in your data. So the time series forecasting methods, um, project patterns that identified in recent time series observation, whether you have a rising sales, for example, or a decrease in sales, or other types of patterns. So this, this approach assumes that the future values of the time series can be estimated from the past values in your data. Time series behavior. So before we try to make a prediction and forecast about a time series, let's first understand the behavior of time series. There are different types of behavior for time series that involves patterns and variation. These are trend, seasonality, cycles, irregular variations, and random variation. So we're gonna talk about each of these um, in the following. Let's start with trends and seasonality. What is a trend? 
a trend is a long term upward or a downward movement in your data. So it can be caused by population shifts or changing income or any other actually factor. So as you can see here, this is an upward trend. So on the x axis, we have time because we are working with time series and time is a factor. And on the y axis, we have the data value, whatever it is, is amount of dollar, amount of sales, amount of whatever. Okay. So as you see here, this is on average. This data behind this it actually can have fluctuation up and down, up and down, up and down. But on average, as you see, it's going upward, it increases. Okay, so this is an upward trend. Next, we have the downward trend. So the average, the, the average values for our data has decreased through time. So this is called a downward trend so again um, a trend is a long-term upward on average or downward movement in your data next we have seasonality so seasonality you might have actually heard about these furries um, it involves the short-term and fairly regular variations um, in your data it can be monthly happens during a month happen during a year happen during it even a day so for example suppose the time that restaurants are open not during a pandemic so if if we actually want to plot the amount of customers the amount of the sales during a day we have 24 hours 1 to 24 and on the y-axis we have the amount of sales for a restaurant what do we think is the peak for the sale? Of course, it's going to be through lunch time, for example, like 12 p.m., right? So at 12 p.m., there's going to be a peak. The amount of sales, the amount of customers is going to skyrocket. Another example is um, the amount of sales for all businesses, especially clothing and gift industries during the uh, holidays um, specifically for example the uh, new year Christmas or uh, Valentine's right so there's going to be a peak um, and it's going to be repeated right so this year at Christmas next year Christmas is going to be a hike in the amount of sales so this this short term and regular variation um, is called seasonal Cycles and variations are other types of behaviors, starting with cycles. So cycles are wave-like variations and fluctuation in the data in time series that last at least more than one year. So the timing here is important, the length of the time or the time horizon here. It has to be long term. These behavior can be caused by, um, can be due to economic issues, or political issues or agricultural conditions or others so as you can see here these very like fluctuations in data are called cycles and this is happens in long time horizon besides these trends and seasonality and cycles we have also variation other types of variation um, we have uh, the irregular variation, the types of variation that we cannot predict, and it's irregular. Um, so that means that it's under unusual circumstances that do not you know, typically happen. For example, a, a, a variation in, in a business for sale, for uh, customer demand, uh, for prices that is caused by a labor strike right so a labor strike is you, you can't predict it when it's going to happen it's something irregularly happen and um, it's an unusual circumstances that's going to impact businesses mm, suppose it's uh, if it's your labor is going to go on a strike then your business is going to shut down 
So it has a big impact on your business. Or if your supplier, one of your supplier go, uh, labors go on a strike. Or it can be due to other types of irregular variations, such as uh, a weather event, um, a tornado, a flood, or, for example, a pandemic, such as the COVID-19, or any type, other types of irregular circumstances. The other types of variation that we have in time series is called random variation. So random variation is caused by chance. That's uh, inherent in any system that you cannot really control. So um, the, the random variation is the residual remaining variation after all the other variation types have been counted for. After you have counted for uh, cycles, trends, um, seasonality, and irregular variation, whatever variation remains, it's, it's called random variation.